Hello everyone, serious video. So I've made this video to give extreme caution to anyone who watches Pignorant. Now, Pignorant is a, it could be seen as a very inspiring documentary for activists. So therefore I feel a duty to mention this and give a big beware to any one, any vegan, any activist, any animal rights investigator who is feeling compelled to mimic or do a similar investigation that you see in that documentary. I feel a responsibility to let you know about something that wasn't included in the documentary. It was in earlier cuts of the film, but we removed that clip. So at about 6.20 a.m., I was reviewing clips of the footage we got from the chambers. And after I had planted the cameras, at about 3.30 a.m., the whole chamber does a big turn. And I planted the cameras, I think about two-ish, about 2 a.m. or something like that, just after about 2.30 a.m. Now, the reason we avoided 3.30 a.m. is because I was reviewing the security camera footage from the kill floor a week before, and I saw someone on the screen around 3.30 a.m. Now, this was just, a, this was a, I think it was about a few days out, reviewing the, the, the camera footage from the kill floor, looking when's the best opportunity to go in, seeing a worker on the floor at about 3.30. So therefore, I thought, let's avoid that, that time just to avoid bumping into the worker. Now, what I didn't know is that worker was actually on the kill floor doing a test to make sure everything's operating correctly. What I suspect is just a test run of the chamber, making sure it's just turning. And he goes and he pushes a button and it turns at about 3.30 a.m. Because both things correspond, the, the worker on the kill floor and the chamber turning. So it was actually just pure luck that I decided to be a little bit more critical of the, the security footage we did have to determine when we should go in a few days before we actually did go in. So that's what, what sort of steered us away from 3.30 a.m. and to 2.30 a.m. I'm going to show you that clip that we removed from the documentary. Now, this is me just being in pure and utter shock at what could have happened. So what could have happened, obviously, if I was in that chamber and Dan was in there, um, he was on top of a cage, I was going down, you know, down into the second cage to retrieve cameras in CO2 gas. What would have happened is we would have both been killed in a horrific way. We would have been crushed in a rotating chamber filled with gondola cages and cogs and chains and then died in CO2 gas. That's what would have happened if we were in the chamber setting up the camera when when this guy does a test run and, and pushes the button. And he wouldn't have known we are in there. So we, we cheated death by about an hour, you know, and that was just simply pure luck. So what I'm what I'm saying to activists who who look at this and think I want to try to do something similar is there are a lot of things that we found out after the fact that made this mission so much more dangerous than I first thought. Now I knew it was dangerous, but we, there were so many unknowns and one of them was that the chamber just randomly turns at a certain time. So that that that's that's something we wouldn't have we didn't really know until we got that footage from the inside. So, so yeah, I'll show you this clip. This is me, just raw, raw emotion, realizing that we nearly died. And this is a warning to anyone who tries to mimic it. Make sure you know everything about these chambers before you even attempt to do this. Because these chambers, the, the slaughterhouses here, the pig slaughterhouses here operate... 24-7. In other countries, they shut down at night. They might suck the gas out of the chamber. But in the UK, they're running 24-7. They could have test runs. You don't know. You could get crushed and killed and die a horrific death if you try to attempt anything like this without doing extreme due diligence. And I, my recommendation is don't do it. Uh, but I understand a lot of people, they're a bit they're a bit crazy like me. They want to get this footage. I mean, they want to they want to do some crazy shit. Um, but my advice is don't do it. That would be my advice because it's extremely risky. But if you're going to do it, exercise extreme diligence. Be very careful, meticulous. Make sure you know every single thing you need to know before you even attempt such a thing. And there's always going to be an extreme risk element to doing anything like this. So here's that clip. And uh, yeah, check out Pignorant on Amazon Prime. Share it around with your friends. It's also on Tubi. Hoping to get it worldwide soon, trying our best. But yeah, here's this clip. Peace.
I'll be going down into the gas. We're gonna get cool. Okay, so I'm just doing a video diary here because um, I just went through the footage and at um, at around three thirty in the footage, the chambers start going. The guy must come in and do a test. And as you can see here, this is the chamber we were working on. One of the reasons we steered clear of 3.30 is because in the um, <clears throat> undercover, deep cover footage that Dan got, um, we could see someone, a maintenance guy on the floor at 3.30, so we thought it better to avoid him. I had no idea they turned the chambers on. So if we were an hour later, those chambers would have moved. I could have been on the second chamber with a lanyard hooked up to the chamber, I would have been dragged straight down into the gas. Dan would have been crushed. We would have died in that chamber. I just found that out then. It's 6.20 a.m. on the morning of that we got this footage and I'm reviewing it and saw that. That's... That's crazy.